Hello and welcome to this guitar video lesson. My name is Jake Reichwart, and in today's lesson, it will be my pleasure to share with you a topic in jazz guitar playing and really in all guitar playing, uh, which is chord substitutions. The probably the most important thing about chord substitutions that you can, um, as a baseline, where to start is uh, the rhythmic aspect of all things, because, or. Or putting it another way, uh, knowing where you are in the tune and not losing your spot. Let's say uh, that you're playing uh, some tune, some standard that has a form of AABA, -A uh, classic jazz standard uh, with four, with a, each section lasting eight measures. You're playing the first eight measures, you got yourself into some, you got tangled in some chord substitution that you're trying, it's not working out, doesn't sound good but you are keeping the time uh, on the downbeat of the second eight measure uh, eight measures there's a big c chord so you play you did something screwy didn't work out but you landed exactly on time on on measure number nine on the downbeat with that c chord you know you could probably say that you got away with it so being able to keep time and make sure you know exactly where you are is key to be being able to play chord substitutions. This is not the ultimate guide in the world for chord substitutions. These are the chord substitutions that I use most commonly. And furthermore, sometimes a chord substitution could be got at by different methods. For example, in the last couple of years, there has been a great discussion about the diminished sixth Barry Harris concept. I never studied this concept myself. But as it turns out, uh, I do things on the guitar that sound exactly the same. Um, if I'm playing this little, let's take the chord, let's take, play the, uh, take the tune, uh, Fly Me to the Moon, so. That sound right there. That's based on something that I taught myself to do, which is to play minor chords, minor seventh chords, or this A minor seven, you can view it as a C6, but. And in between the inversions to insert a diminished chord. There. And that exactly actually is the Barry Harris uh, diminished six concept right there, but I never knew that that was a thing. I just did it because to me, every time I play the, the diminished chord, it's a hint of the five chord of an E7 flat nine. As it turns out, if you play the top notes, you get eight notes. To me, it was not a scale thing. It's just something that I did separately. So the point here is that we might arrive at certain chord substitutions by one method, but there's another explanation for it. So the four main types of chord substitutions that we're going to work on are color notes, chord substitutions within a key, uh, replacing one chord with another within the same key, secondary dominance and triton substitutions, which is kind of one big topic and kind of blends into each other. Seventh chords based on, this is number four, seventh chords based on the altered scale, diminished scale, and whole tone scale. What I'm going to also do is add two side substitutions, I guess. And one of those is slash chords, which is to play, or one way to define it is a triad with a different bass note. So for example, the C triad, but with D flat in the bass, can function as a C7, flat nine how c7 there's no seventh in it well it doesn't have to have a seventh all it has to avoid is the major seventh right we talked about not playing avoid notes i have a nice example where this works the song jinji the classic bossa nova tune by uh, jobim uh first of all, let's do it on the here the bridge 
da, I love you more than da. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. So, and, and in fact, you can also do this, which is E flat with D flat in the bass. So that's an interesting substitution. So we're going to talk, touch a little bit on chord substitutions that are triads over different bass notes as, as a way to, again, add a little uh, something else. And lastly, a category that is beyond definition. It's really something that I kind of came up on my own, and I'm sure others came up on their own and found a way maybe to make a system out of it. To me, it's just something that I decided to do and like, you know, screw it. I'm going to do it whether it's correct or not. And that is simply to add a note in a chord just because. No reason, no har harmonic uh, theoretical reason for it. Just do it. Just do it and see what happens. And that's a great way to learn chord substitutions. Just play something and see if it works. So as an example, I'm going to play the uh, first few chords of uh, All the Things You Are, which normally would, in the simplest form, we're going to use All the Things You Are for several examples. Um, normally I would play it like this. Uh, right? So even before I, I go to the method I was going to mention, when we get to the diatonic chord substitutions where you can replace a chord with another one within the same scale, we're going to use this tune because instead of playing an F minus 7, we can play you Right? So I... We'll get to that in a minute but in this example of where where i was going to go with this is i'm just going to insert just because i'm going to take every five note for each chord and just for the heck of it i'm going to add replace the five with a sharp five and see, just see what happens so instead of playing this i'm going to play this you and then instead of playing this i'm going to play this this note that sharp five does not belong in the scale well, screw it. I'm going to play it anyway and see if it sounds interesting. So let's see what happens. Wow. Strange and mysterious. And that's the beauty of it. You could just try it and say, Wow, that one sounded really cool, and that one stank. Keep the one that sounded cool. Get rid of the one that, that stank. So once again, D major. To A7. And then instead of A minor 7, I'll play a uh, C major 7 because again as we mentioned it's a great substitute because a C major 7 against an A is like playing a A minor 9 but we can forget about the A minor just playing a C major 7 by itself sounds great kind of substitute for the G minor 7 playing a different different bass note what chord is this it's a B flat major with an add 9 so a B flat major B flat major uh, add 9 over a G bass note is kind of a G minor C 
7, but with a suspension, 11. Adding a 2 in front of the 5, and then another 2 in front of this 5, and another 2 in front of this 5. So we have three 7th chords back to back, which are, uh, of course, secondary dominance. So right after this G minor 7, we have an F7, F sharp 7, to B7, to E7, to A7. What greater example of secondary dominance? And this one is actually written into the tune. That's what the song is. It's, it's how it's been written. All for the purpose of reaching this uh, D minor 7. So D minor 7 being preceded by an A7, being preceded by an, an E7, being preceded by a B7, being preceded by an F sharp 7. That's how the melody goes. That's your F sharp. That's your B7. That's your E7. And this B flat 7 Try to substitution for E7, of course. And th there's your A7. So uh, it's a prime example of secondary dominance actually being written into the tune. So what I did was take each of these secondary dominance and preceded each one with its minor 7 chord, with its 2. So... Since we had a B flat thrown in there, why not proceed that by an F minor 7? E minor 7 before the A7. So each of these seventh chords got preceded by its relative 2. We can complicate things further by replacing all of these chords with their tritone substitution. So instead of playing on F sharp minor 7, uh, seven playing a C7, so let's see how that works. And then instead of the B, playing an F7. Sounds kind of dissonant, but, you know, interesting. And then you can take each of these seven chords and proceed those with their twos. Anyway. Let's look at the bridge for a second, at the B section. Your basic uh, two my uh, two five one, right? What I do often is take out this two. I don't play this G minor. I'll play straight the C seven. In fact. I won't even play the one. I'll play the whole thing as a C7 or C11, like this. And do the same thing for the next 2-5, which is exactly a step down, so... And then that's what's written but this is a great example of not uh, adding chord substitutions but actually removing chord substitutions this was a two five to one i removed the two and i removed the one and just stayed with the five movement because why not that's one of those why not substitutions just throw it in because if you're going from here to here why not stop here along the way
maybe here I'll resolve it just just to make something different.